Hi, my name is Andrew Weatherall, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some research we're doing to try and shed new light on the old problem of brain injury. I'm one of the doctors with CareFlight, and one of the things that CareFlight does is we send medical teams out in helicopters to accidents to try and bring the best of the hospital to the patients as quickly as possible when they're having a really lousy day. One of the biggest problems that we wrestle with is what to do with a patient with traumatic brain injury. And it's not just a problem because traumatic brain injury is common, it's a problem because we know that some of those patients will be left with the kind of damage that never entirely goes away. The sort of damage that stops them walking out of the hospital into the life that they had planned. It's a tragedy for them and those around them, but it's sort of a tragedy for all of us because we all lose out when they can't go back to living out their dreams. We do, however, all get to foot the bill for looking after them for the rest of their lives. And the best guess is that each and every year, we spend at least another $8.6 billion on trying to look after those people. So you can see that we would really like to start providing the brain exactly what it wants when we get out to the accident scene. The challenge is though, that when we get there, it turns out that the brain is sort of inside a box. And so for us, when we get there, it's a little bit like we're having to work in the dark. Now we don't entirely work with nothing to go off. So we might try and use the kind of monitors we've had for the last couple of decades, where we say, put a light on the thumb. And while that's really useful information, ultimately we're kind of saying, hey thumb, how's the brain going? What would be far better is if we could shine a light directly on the brain itself. Because then if we could see the brain and see what was happening to it in real time, maybe we'd be able to tell when the brain's being squeezed in a funny way. Or maybe we'd even be able to tell if there was a little bit of bleeding happening. Like there, say. Or maybe we could even see if things were looking even a bit worse than that. So if we could shine the light directly at the brain, it'd really be a bit like we were turning on the lights for the whole team. That technology might now be available. It's called near-infrared spectroscopy, and it relies on shining specific wavelengths of light into the tissues and picking up the amount that's reflected back at a probe at the surface. By looking at that little bit of light reflected back, you can tell a whole lot of things about how much oxygen is being delivered to the tissues, used by the tissues, and also the blood flow through that area. So what we want to do in this study, which we're calling the phantom study, is have a researcher apply the probes to the patient while our medical team gets on with treating the patient exactly like they would any other time. We'll then follow up the patients to see what injuries they had as well as how things turn out for them over the next 12 months. Then we hope to take the crucial step in providing the link between the monitoring values and patterns that we see initially and what happens to the patient down the track. If we can uncover that association, then hopefully we'll be one step closer to figuring out exactly what's happening to the brain in real time and we can do the sort of work where we start getting the teams to give the brain what it wants rather than the thumb what it wants. So this research is all about turning on the lights for our teams. We think it's really worthwhile because it's all about trying to make things better for our patients so that they can walk back into the life they had planned. And after all, we're kind of sick of working in the dark.